One of the differences between men and women is that men feel they have to dominate things. It's not enough to enjoy nature or a job or even a conversation. Man has to dominate. I think that's why we eat so much meat. I mean, there's domination for you. Man against animal, who's gonna eat who? Most men think vegetarian is an Indian word meaning lousy hunter. It's not smart or correct, but it's one of the things that makes us what we are. scenes from this week's show. Harold tells me all the big shows do this. Shows like Laughing or Carol Burnett. I know Marlon Perkins does this kind of thing. I should also mention that we got special guests here, Dave Thomas and Graham Greene. Bill's going to jump up and down until he hurts himself. And now, here's the man whose career has done for plaid what music videos did for lingerie. My uncle, Bernard Green. Here's the man who has done for my TV career what pigs have done for airplanes, my nephew Harold. <laughs> Had some bad news up the lodge this week. Uh, Grouchy Radcliffe has passed away. Oh, no. And I didn't know that. Grouchy's gone. Yeah. I didn't know. Oh, we should do something. We should send flowers or something like that. No, a card. A card. We'll send a card. <laughs> a sympathy card. Yeah. Oh, I saw a lovely one the other day. It had a squished worm on the pavement, you know? <laughs> and when you open up, the message inside said, Sorry to hear that you hit the road. <laughs> Send that. We should send that. We should do something like that. If we did something like that, we should do that. Let me. What should we do? Why don't you try two minutes silence? About a hundred times. It's not that his passing was that unexpected. The Grouchy's got to be the oldest farmer in the whole area. He was liked. He was a very colorful character, especially his language. <laughs> no, I think he was a lot friendlier than he seemed because he stands around his fence, yelling out obscenities, throwing bricks at people. <laughs> Well, he could be grouchy, you know, that's how he got his name, grouchy. He was, uh, he was difficult. Yeah. Cranky. Hard to get along with. Obnoxious. He was insane. I Harold. hated him. I hated him. <laughs> Everyone did, Harold. And the strange thing is that uh, when grouchy died, he was very, very rich. And there's now no friends and no relatives to get the inheritance. I didn't really hate him. You know, I think admire is a better word. Forget it, Harold. The only guy who has a chance is Junior Singleton. He went up there every day, made friends with Grouchy, did all the chores and everything. I think he's looking pretty smart now. He's going to inherit the whole darn thing. I admire Junior. Oh, man. <laughs> uh, he's great. You are pathetic, Harold. When I go, you're not getting what I got. Well, when you go, I'll have everything I want. <laughs> Hi, you're watching the Red Green Show. <laughs> you're lucky. <laughs> Oh, there's holes in my tent, and the water's dripping in. It's falling on my hat and dripping on my chin. Always remember camping lesson number one. If you got bugs in your tent, don't shoot them with a gun. All right, all right, all right. You're sitting at the kitchen table, stirring your coffee, minding your own business. Suddenly you look up, she's staring right at you. Yeah, you realize your wife's been talking to you and you haven't been paying attention? And here's the capper. Yeah. She just said, well, what do you think? Well, she's got your corner. You can't say you weren't listening. And then you can't say something like, oh, geez, I don't know, dear. Why don't you decide? I mean, that's a lame excuse. She know you weren't listening, right? And she's going to get mad. Oh, yeah. The best thing to do in a situation like this, don't look at her. No. <laughs> when she sees that blank look in your eyes, and sees you breathing through your mouth, you're a dead duck. <laughs> no, the best defense is a good offense. Change the subject right then and there. I know a great subject. Her. <laughs> Tell her how great she looks. Say, uh, how long has it been since I told you how much I appreciate every little thing you do? Yeah, or, or, or just say, when was the last time we were out together on a nice evening? Oh, 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 oh. be careful with that one. That well, should only be used by a professional. Yeah. <laughs> the most important thing is to, while you've got her distracted, is to get out of the room fast before she remembers what she was talking about. Hopefully she wasn't paying attention. Yeah, like you. <laughs> I think you're going to notice a little more sensitivity in uh, this week's Handyman Corner, because with uh, 
Rochie Radcliffe passing away and not having any relatives to celebrate or anything. A bunch of us has kicked in various car parts and assorted flotsam and jetsam. We're going to make a grouchy some kind of a headstone or a mausoleum or something. So that every time we go by the cemetery, we'll be reinforced with a comforting thought that he really is dead. <laughs> now, everything means something, you know, with this type of thing. Uh, for example, these uh, car axle stands, what they will say to us is that every once in a while, it's a good idea for a man to spend the winter up on blocks. <laughs> the radiator. That means it's okay to blow off a little steam. <laughs> Wheel discs? Well, they're mainly decorative. <laughs> now we're about to cross the line between being an artisan and being a handyman. Because I'll tell you, this project requires as much taste and artistic ability as it does a big hammer and the attitude to make it effective. And the thing with art is, there's no right way and no wrong way. <laughs> All right, maybe there still is a wrong way. <laughs> I decided to go instead with the handyman's secret weapon uh, duct tape. And don't worry about the damage that acetylene torch. It was a rental. <laughs> so now what we have is not only an attractive Art Deco headstone, it's also extremely functional. For example, uh, I've installed the uh, turn signals to uh, hook them up to some of the Christmas lights there. And so now the deceased can signal his turn, right? <laughs> or left. Up or down, you know, but with uh, Grouchy, I think what I'll do is uh, put the four-way flashers on, keep his options open. Actually, where he's going, he's going to wish I put in air conditioning. <laughs> Maybe the lucky dice will make all the difference. You know, uh, when somebody famous dies, like uh, a president or Elvis or something, they always have an eternal flame. So what I've done is I've taken the gas tank out of Grouchy's car, and we'll just fire that up. <laughs> Boy, that smells bad. There we go. There's your flame. The eternal part will depend on his gas mileage. <laughs> and uh, I've also uh, put an ashtray in here, just in case Grouchy gets himself cremated. <laughs> and I've hooked up the windshield washers down through this gas nozzle. They go into here and so on and go down and water that plant. Uh, because I figure Grouchy's probably not going to get a lot of flowers with his personality. Let's see how that works. There we go. Well, that brings on a lot of feelings for me. How about you? <laughs> anyway, there's the kind of thing that you can do the next time some distant, far away distant relative of yours passes away. Until then, remember, if the women don't find you handsome, they should at least find you handy. Honk if you love inheritances. <laughs> Speaking of honking, stay tuned for Dave Thomas, and we'll check out and see how Bill's doing in the smokehouse. I want to talk to all you middle-aged guys, and I want you to know that you're not alone. I'm one of you. And every week, more and more of us are coming out of the tool room and admitting it. <laughs> admitting that we have nothing to say to anyone about anything. <laughs> I know that feeling. Your wife probably understands. You've said it all to her before. You're still with her. You have nothing to add. <laughs> That's all right. Unfortunately, there are some guys who have nothing to say, but keep talking. <laughs> if you find yourself ranting about how people are parking their cars on your street, you have nothing to say, stop talking. <laughs> if you find yourself going on and on about how Jeopardy is way better than Wheel of Fortune, <laughs> or how hard these new orange juice cans are to open, or the high price of hammers, you have nothing to say. <laughs> If you find yourself telling a hilarious story that you read in Reader's Digest, stop talking. <laughs> no one is listening to you. The person you're talking to has glazed over and is nodding their head while they make up a grocery list, or plan their winter vacation, or vow never to get as old and boring as you are. <laughs> so don't just keep talking until you think of something you may not. <laughs> Remember, I'm pulling for you. We're all in this together. <laughs> Hi, Winston Rothschild here for Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services, reminding you, don't get hosed somewhere else. Call 1-800-555-SUCK. <laughs> well, we had the reading of Grouchy Radcliffe's will. Junior Singleton was real excited because the lawyer had called him and told him specifically to get down there. I'll tell you, Junior had dollar signs dancing in his head. Something tells me those dollars didn't dance into his wallet. Well, being of sound mind and body, Grouchy bequeathed uh, his farm and all his properties and all his investments 
and his domestic and international bank accounts to the harmonious Church of Mars under the auspices of the right Reverend Larry. <laughs> oh, man. He did remember us, though, Harold. Grouchy left his entire manure pile to Possum Lodge. <laughs> so we don't come out of it empty-handed. We are the heirs of manure. Have you ever smelled the air of manure? <laughs> so did Junior inherit anything for all his efforts? Yes, sir. Grouchy left him his prize steer, Wanda the Wonder Cow. <laughs> and I think Junior was pleased. He, uh, he had an acceptance speech, which he yelled for some reason. And during that, he vowed to make that cow a tribute to Grouchy by having it butchered and eaten before the sun set on Radcliffe's grave. <laughs> Our contestant, our contestant starting on the far end is my Uncle Red, and of course, Dougie Franklin and his brother Ben Franklin. Welcome to the show, one and all. Today's categories are atomic physics, the life of Monet, the impressionist artist, differential equations, post-feminist poetry. Aww. I picked that one. <laughs> Palodromes or cars? Well, that post-feminist poetry sounds tempting. I think I'll go with the cars, Harold. <laughs> oh, uh, alrighty then. Okay, and remember, please, to phrase your answer in the form of an answer. All right. <laughs> Question one. What driver safety device was made mandatory on all passenger vehicles in safety device was made mandatory because it was mandatory. <laughs> they insisted upon it in 1962. He opened a new road to landscape painting by applying scientific principles deduced from the laws of light. <laughs> no. Do you repeat the question, Harold? May I? Yes. What driver's safety device was made mandatory in all passenger vehicles in 1962? Yes, Dougie. I would have to say it would be the fire retardant Asbestos line fire suit. <laughs> no. <laughs> Uncle Red? The really big car? No. <laughs> the seat belt. The seat belts were made mandatory oh, in 1962. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay, we're out of that one. Yeah. Time for another visit with our pal Ranger Guard. Hi, Red. Hi, yeah. Harold. Yeah. Nice to see you up here at the fire tower. <laughs> Always nice to see young people up at the fire tower. Been waiting for you. Well, we can't stay long, Gord. Just uh, came for that book that you said you, you'd lend me. Oh, right. There you go, from steer to steak, the do-it-yourself, how to slaughter book. Great, right, that's terrific. Thanks. You want a coffee? I, I knew you were coming. I made a pot. Uh, it only take me about 15 minutes to run up to the top. Get you a cup. No, 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 come on back. No, no, come on, come on, come on. I'm not going to interrupt you for that long. I see that you're in the middle of research and something important here. Oh, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm looking for a pet, Red. Oh, boy. You gonna try again, are you, Gord? Oh, sure, yeah. There must be a pet for me out there somewhere. <laughs> Seems like every dog you get runs away on you. Yeah. <laughs> Last one stayed two days. Well, that's good. Then the tranquilizer wore off. He was gone. <laughs> boy. What about cats? You ever tried cats? Yeah, four of them. Yeah, the last one I was sure wouldn't go far. He was blind, but... <laughs> you know what you need, Gord? You need an animal that doesn't move, like maybe coral or moss or something. <laughs> no. No, I need an animal with a sense of duty. One that'll stay with me up in the fire tower, just looking out over the forest for years on end, never questioning why, just knowing that it's his role in life. Boy, animals that dumb are pretty much extinct. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, Gord. All right, this is still anybody's game, because no one said anything even close to right yet. All righty. In some states and provinces, it is still illegal to do what at a red light? <laughs> I'm assuming Ben. The most popular of the series are the Hay Ricks, the Poplars, the Cliffs of Exitat, and the Gar What the heck are you doing there? Look, what do you got? What do you got there? Come on, let me see. Come on, cough no. it up, cough it up. Monet, Monet, look at that. Monet, we're doing, we're doing cars, okay? And what are these, you cheat sheets? You know, I have never been so humiliated in my entire life. You've humiliated me, you've let down the entire family here tonight. Now look. Let's try this once again. Harold, ask him the question again. You play the, the game by the rules. Try her again. Okay, Ben. In some states and provinces, it is still illegal to do what at a red light? <laughs> Peel rubber. No. No, sorry, 
Ben. Oh, you idiot. <laughs> you are an idiot. Okay, we need a tiebreaker. So, pick a number between one and ten. Dougie. Uh, seven. <laughs> ben. I'll go seven, too. <laughs> We may be a while already. <laughs> Uncle Red, can you please pick a number? Your salary, Harold. We got a winner. We got, that's a winner. There you go. Okay. Uncle Red, you win. You win. Well, Bill's in for big fun today on Adventures with Bill because he got himself one of these new uh, fancy trampoline things. A lot of the, uh, the corporations and so forth are having the exercise rooms, and it's kind of a stress therapy thing. And, you get on it, just get on there like that, I guess. But I guess Bill has the professional technique. I just kind of, you know, I'm just an amateur at these things. That's a very interesting mount you got there, Bill. Anyway, up he comes. And uh, now the beauty of this is apparently the more you bounce and jump, then uh, the more stress is relieved from you. And, and uh, of course, I don't think you're supposed to leave your shoes right on the edge of that. That, that to me, is not relieving all that much uh, stress at this point. So I'm saying... I've had about as much stress taken out of me as I really can stand and still be uh, alive, so I'll just let Bill do it. And uh, Bill seems pretty stressed to me, so I'm thinking probably the bigger the bounce, uh, the more stress relief. That only makes sense to me, so I'm helping him. I'm putting a little extra weight on there, and look at the fun he's having. He's having a real good time. I'm thinking we could get him just one good jump, eh, Bill? Just one big one, something you could talk about for your whole life. Well, this could be it. <laughs> Maybe that was his whole life. Oh, no, here he is. Oh, he's got a wheel rim. And a wheel rim, Bill, is sort of like life. You know that? What goes around, comes around. Stay tuned. You won't want to miss what we got planned for the cow or our special guest, Graham Green. As soon as Junior gets here with Wanda the Wonder Cow, we'll be up to our rump roast and steak. Oh, now I feel like Katie Lang. Harold, you look like Katie Lang. Anyway, uh, Stinky's bringing the cow over in the back seat of his 69 Cadillac. He's got twice as much leg room there, which is good, because the cow has twice as much legs. Stinky's putting a farm animal in the back of his Cadillac? What about the smell? Cow didn't seem to mind. So all the guys are bringing different power tools over, depending on what kind of meat we're cutting. I'm using this baby for the Delmonico's. We got a skill saw for the ribs. And we're using a router on the fillet mignons. Oh, oh I don't even want to hear about the hamburger. Buster's bringing a rototiller. I heard, I heard. Oh. Now I know why people become vegetarians. Harold, the cow is not an animal in the wild. It's, it's like a crop. It's like that apple. All right, this is harvest time, that's all. There is no comparison. I didn't have to murder this apple first before I ate it. No, with the steaks, we're doing the humane thing and killing the cow first. You're eating that apple alive. <laughs> oh. This week's letter goes as follows. Dear experts, a lot of my roof shingles are cracking and curling up, and I'm having trouble keeping the paint on the inside and outside walls. Not that my wife liked the color anyway. Can you tell me what to do? Well, it sounds like you've got water leaking in through the shingles in your roof. I'll say so. You, you know, uh, <clears throat> if this guy is from Alberta like it sounded, <laughs> he probably heats his house with oil. So <clears throat> what I recommend is you take a piece of rope and you put one end of the rope in the oil tank and you thread the other end of the rope out through the basement window. What's the rope for? That's your wick. <laughs> you see, them 250-gallon tanks of oil are the cheapest dynamite you're going to find. Come on! You're going to blow the guy's house up just because his roof leaks? Oh, it's got to be done, Harold. It's got to be done. Once you get water in the walls, you get mold, you get fungus. Somebody with a wooden leg comes over to visit, catches up a case of dry rot. <laughs> you're working on a lawsuit. Yeah, Harold, and he already said his wife doesn't like the color of the house. Once you're into that stuff, it's easier just to flatten the place. Yeah, it's like I always said, it's cheaper to build a new home than it is to fix the old place. And that's a great thing about the crappy way they build houses these days. <laughs> just light the wick and kaboom! <laughs> 
lot of our viewers would like to know how to start up and run their own business, and we got a fella here who's done just that, Winston Rothschild of Rothschild Sewage and Septic Sucking Services. Yeah, that's right, Red. Well, I'm uh, living the Canadian dream. Find a career that suits your temperament. Take Junior Singleton, for instance. I mean, uh, he loves hunting, right? Yeah. So he's going to enjoy killing and slaughtering that new cow he just inherited. Yeah, it'll probably be slow enough that he can actually hit it. <laughs> no, no, Red. You don't shoot a cow. Take it from me, eh? I worked in a slaughterhouse for a whole summer. Sledgehammer. Right here. Boom. Instant dirt now. Don't get home. Oh, Harold, stop crying. <laughs> you know what? My dad gave me some good advice once. Listen to this. If you're searching for a career, look around and see what you do in your spare time for fun. That's good advice. You suck out septic tanks in your spare time, Mr. <laughs> well, no, 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 but geez, I love traveling. I, I love meeting people. I love the great outdoors. I like pumps. <laughs> and I guess your dad's got a job he enjoys too, doesn't he? Oh, absolutely. He is the happiest drunken gambling gigolo you ever met. <laughs> So you should just do what you enjoy, right? That's the secret. Because in the septic business, you don't have to take a back seat to nobody. Just follow your nose. Your dream. Yeah, right. <laughs> I have an open invitation here from Ranger Gord. It's from Ranger Gord. We all know Ranger Gord, right? He's been up in the, the tree watching for fires for the past 16 years all over Possum Lake. And oh, and, and he's having a pajama party. So. Uh, <laughs> I'm having a pajama party. Bring your ABBA albums. Harold, if the people of this community ever find out what we did in that parking lot to that car, <laughs> I will never be able to hold my head up high again. You actually did it, Uncle Red? You did the whole Texas Chainsaw Massacre thing to that poor little defenseless milk maker? We chickened out, Harold. Every last one of us. There wasn't one guy who could look into those big brown eyes and then nail her with a sledgehammer. <laughs> Guys were sobbing. They got misty-eyed. At one point, Moose Thompson asked the cow to marry him. <laughs> this is a dark day for the image of Possum Lodge. Well, I, for one, am very proud of you, Uncle Red. Don't make it worse, Harold. <laughs> I don't know how many vegetarians there are in this country, but I bet most of them work in slaughterhouses. <laughs> you know, eating meat is like having kids. The less you know about it, the more likely you are to go ahead. Well, well I hope you apologize to Wanda, you know, because that cow's had a very stressful day. <laughs> oh, you could tell that by the backseat of Stinky's Cadillac. <laughs> oh, it's meeting time. Yeah, you go ahead, Harold. I'll be down in a little while. Okay. If my wife is watching, I'll be coming straight home after the meeting. And after what I've been through today, I do not want to have any meat for dinner. Let's have hot dogs. <laughs> the rest of you, thanks for watching. Till next time, on behalf of myself and Harold and the whole gang up here at Possum Lodge, keep your stick on the ice.